Okay, um, and now for something completely different. Let's do some on-device transcoding on the Android. Uh, at this point, maybe, uh, probably many of you are thinking, why even bother, right? Like you have the cloud, it's super powerful, has unlimited memory, it's always plugged in, it scales. Just um, send your content up there, it will take care of it in seconds. Well, uh, here's why, we did. Um, and uh, turns out that um, if you do that, the content that you're sending might not necessarily match the content that you're serving, it, you, and you might end up sending uh, a lot of extra bytes that your backend transcoder will throw away. Um, so you wasting users' bandwidth, which is, you know, like, yeah, kind of uncool. Um, so enter Project Lighter. Uh, we decided to use capabilities of the device to throw out those bytes before they go through the precious pipeline. A uh, quick shout out to Yuya. Um, he's a developer out of Japan, and his work on the Android Transcoder was very heavy inspiration on the work that I did. Thanks. Um, and to understand how to do transcoding on Android devices, we kind of have to understand the, the core of it, which is uh, media codec APIs. So device in your pocket, um, it oftentimes has to play, you know, like fairly heavy content, like 4K and everything. Um, its CPU cannot handle it. That's why most of them come with actual fairly simple, um, but still fairly powerful um, hardware that does that for you. Um, fortunately, Android gives you access to that hardware um, through media codec APIs. Uh, those were introduced seven-ish years ago. I remember being at the uh, uh, Google I.O. talk when they were introduced. Um, and the way you use media codec is, well, you instantiate um, an instance. Um, you by asking the framework what you want to do, um, like say decode H264. Um, if that what you're asking is supported, you will get an instance, um, which now you will have to talk to, and you do that using buffer queues. Um, you dequeue the input buffer from the codec, fill it with your data, and release it back to the codec. The codec will do something to it, and then you will, you're expected to dequeue the output buffer consume its contents, and release it back to the codec. You don't own buffers. That's the main idea. Uh, codec owns and controls buffers. You only own your content. Um, if you keep requesting like, more and more buffers, codec at some point will just like, stop giving them to you because it simply doesn't have the capacity. Um, you do this number eight process continuously until all of your data is processed. So this is kind of like the, the key. So how do we transcode? Well, um, obviously we need two instances of media codec, one running as a decoder, another one running as an encoder. Codec can work in two different modes. Uh, for video, we choose to use uh, surface modes. So surface is kind of like a really low level API. Just imagine that your uh, pixels live somewhere on the hardware side. You don't really have access to them. But nice thing about the surface is that it's fast and it's really easy on a battery. Um, we can still manipulate pixels um, by using uh, OpenGL shaders. So those, you know, even though we don't have pixel direct pixel access, we can still do stuff with it. Um, and here is like another useful thing uh, comes in both for using OpenGL and for the ability to, 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 to transcode on device, you can actually now implement filters and do some sort of editing um, on the device, something you know, like you couldn't necessarily do on the back end. You may choose to use software version. It will send you byte buffers. You will have access to raw pixels. Uh, you will have a lot of stuff. You have to do all your rendering in software. Um, but it's going to be a little bit slower and probably eat up a bit more battery. So uh, what I just described, that's transcoding one track. That's transcoding a video track. Uh, we have to get those frame fr frames from somewhere. Uh, we have to use media extractor class that the Android gives us. Uh, we have to write them. We'll use media muxer class. We support uh, audio transcoding. Uh, render is in double quotes because it's basically just a through pipe at this point. We don't really do anything, any kind of audio like rendering or processing. And if you're not sure what to do um, with that particular type of track, we just send it directly from extractor to muxer. We just we still want to preserve it. 
Um, how do you use LIDAR? Uh, well, you create an instance of Media Transformer, and you call it transform command. Um, you tell it where to get data, where to put data, um, how to transform it. Um, you give it an instance of listener. Believe me, I want to do that. The, the whole thing is very asynchronous. Uh, you want to um, you want to you want a listener, so it gives you progress updates on things that are going on. Um, and one interesting tidbit here that uh, we ask you to pass in a unique request ID. Um, to effectively tokenize your request um, because you can actually call transform multiple times and it will queue up your request. So we need to be able to tell them apart. Um, especially if you want to cancel them, um, you have to pass in that, uh, the token so we know which one to cancel. Um, after you're done, please release it. And if you want to do any kind of like upload stuff like we do, um, just you can estimate what your transcoding like, target will look like. So let's take a little bit higher look at the whole transcoding, a little bit more conceptual like look at the transcoding process. Um, and we can identify like fairly distinct steps in it, right? So we have to read the frame. We have to decode it. We have to render it onto the output frame, encode it and write it out. So we have five distinct steps, five distinct components with a fairly well-defined interaction between them, right? The output of one step is very distinctly what the next step expects. Uh, software engineers in the audience, you probably are kind of guessing where I'm going with this when you have distinctly defined APIs. Uh, these are, all, these are okay, all, all can be defined as interfaces. Um, and doing this is, you know, like a very powerful software concept. Now, allowing us to pass our own implementations of those interfaces, now we can modify the transcoding process like the way we want it. Uh, if you want to be able to read, you know, like AV1, something that a lot of Android devices cannot do, sure, just implement your custom decoder um, around David and have that do your bidding. Um, if you want to write AV1, again, the Android doesn't support it yet, but sure, you can wrap a custom encoder. Um, uh, you can pass in your video render and make, a, you know, like a deep fake. Don't, but you know, you can. Um, so, but don't. Um, LiDAR is open source. It lives here. So get it. Break it, fix it, um, patch is welcome, let me know what's wrong with it. I am, but I'm just, you know, like I'd be very excited to hear from you. Uh, immediately, what's coming up next? Um, well, LiDAR is still like a little bit, um, like a little bit light on features, because we want to we wanna bring it a little bit more to the usable things, right? So we want to implement more filters out of the box, uh, ability to do track-based operations, such as muxing and demuxing tracks, um, ability to do file-based operations, which is you know splitting, joining, and things like that, um, some audio work. And I'm sure there is a ton of use cases that I did not even think about. So again, let me know. Um, overall, while working on LiDAR, um, I discovered a lot of pretty interesting things uh, throughout the board. Uh, for example, Android is like, it, they give you like a really low level, great like media codec APIs. But if your you know, like developer wants to do some sort of like editing, muxing, or anything like that, they can't. Um, and we want LiDAR to be off service to that people. So, and if anybody wants to do some plugins, the transcoding process, absolutely, LiDAR would probably um, be good at that too. Uh, there are quite a few projects out there um, that do similar things that we want to collaborate with. I've uh, already started discussions with them. Um, and again, we want this to be like a very communal effort. Uh, I don't really want to do this, all of this by myself. I'm not, you know, um, don't have time. I'm not like smart enough. I don't know everything. So um, come help out. Thank you.